morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Mukta Atre, and uh, I'm the project manager for this uh, entire uh, project. And uh, I welcome you all uh, to the coordinator's workshop on heat transfer on behalf of the Ekalavya project. Uh, Professor Fatak could not join us today. He is the uh, principal investigator for the project. So I'm taking this opportunity to welcome you all. We are very, very pleased to have you here. Uh, today's uh, dignitaries include Professor Gaitonde, Professor Sukhatme, who is the chief guest for the event, Professor Vedula, the head of the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Professor Arun and Professor Prabhu, who will be the uh, teaching faculty for this uh, workshop, and they will be doing the main workshop as well. Uh, in, very welcome uh, to you, all of you, sir. And uh, now I'd like to give the mic to Professor Gaitonde, who will be the master of ceremonies for today's event. Thank you. Explosion of engineering education, essentially at the undergraduate level. Okay. So if you look at the output, the, the output quantity wise has exploded, grown, grown tremendously. Quality, we are not so sure. This growth perhaps should have been more gradual, should have begun instead of 30 years ago, maybe 50 years ago. But once it started growing, it uh, exploded maybe with a time constant of maybe 3 years, 4 years of that order. Okay. And that explosive growth has led to problems of what uh, production people call it quality control and quality assurance. And we in IIT noticed it because uh, many of these uh, products of engineering colleges came to us at some time or the other for doing their MTECs and PhDs. And we noticed that their basic uh, grounding at the undergraduate level was not as neat as we would have expected. And that uh, created uh, issues regarding our teaching of our MTech and our management of the PhD programs. This was compounded to some extent by uh, the quality of teachers. The quantity of teachers was low and even the quality of teachers was not what we expected. Because a sort of an inbreeding or a short circuiting route of you know, employing your own graduates as teachers was uh, followed by many of these colleges, indirectly helped by the authorities which says that a graduate engineer with a first class degree is immediately eligible to become a faculty member in an engineering college, which I do not think looking back was a good idea. So with this background, uh, Professor Fatak and Professor Fatak uh, uh, you know, once he takes interest in something, he will go through hell and high water to satisfy himself. So, he did a Bharat Yatra some six or seven years ago. Okay, and he visited a large number of engineering colleges to look at what the ground reality is, the ground truth is. And uh, he came up with some statistics and today's statistics is that there is something like between 4,000 and 5,000 engineering colleges. The number of students who can be admitted is of the order of 13, 14 lakhs at the first year. So, four times that number is roughly the number of students in a college. So, that becomes about 50 lakhs, roughly half a crore. You can take it as a ratio of the population of India and that is not a minuscule number. Slightly more than half of these are in the CS, IT, electronics type of departments. Now, when it comes to teachers, the teacher student ratio which ideally should be, well, we will say if it is 1 to 10 it is utopian, but a good working ratio may be perhaps is 1 to 15. But it is nowhere near 1 to 15, it is on an average it is 1 to 25. It may be worse than this in CS, IT and electronics, 
it may be better than this in traditional branches like mechanical, electrical and civil engineering. It was immediately realized that to improve the quality of output uh, of graduates from these engineering colleges, we need to do what is called backward integration rather than let the graduates come out and then try to improve their lot. We should improve the teaching that they go through, the teaching learning experience that they go through. And since that experience is provided and managed by college teachers, it is necessary for us to improve the abilities of the teachers of these students. And that is how the Ekalavya project began. It was helped by the rapid developments of the internet and what is known as the uh, internet and communication technologies, ICT. And uh, with appropriate funding from the uh, MHRD, the Ekalavya project started about how many? Three, four years ago, right? 2005. Okay, so six years ago. Uh, before Eklavya project started and soon after it was realized that our earlier model of exposing teachers to good engineering practices was what was known as a continuing education program or a short term course for under the QIP scheme or some similar scheme, where at a time maybe of the order of 30 or 40 teachers could be trained. And if you look at the number of uh, students which we just mentioned that the total number of students in engineering colleges is of the order of 40 lakhs or half a crore, divide that by 25 or 30 and you get the number of teachers. And you will find that 30 at a time at one place is too small a number. So, it was decided to jack up this number. The earlier model was something like this, we would have a course here and 30, 35, at most 40 teachers would go back. That is almost like a drop in an ocean. But using ITC, ICT, uh, a new model was developed, uh, properly cooked and implemented by Professor Fatak and this course is maybe the sixth or seventh rendition of that model. Since Professor Fatak was in uh, the CS department, he started on his home ground. He started the first, I think, three courses on computer programming and utilization. The model was similar to what is being implemented now, a coordinator's workshop for five working days out here in IIT Bombay campus. And then you go back, each one of you becomes a center coordinator and each center sort of grabs or tries to host something like 30, 40 teachers. So, in principle, the the total audience is of the order of a few hundreds at least and perhaps thousand more than slightly more than thousand. Because considering the, the coordinators batch 30 or 40 is a good number, considering a classroom in a remote center again 30 or 40 is a good number. So, thousand, thousand five hundred at most two thousand is perhaps what we are, but that two thousand is a very significant number. Uh, Looking at the history, the first three courses were computer programming and utilization and then one course in databases. And for computer programming and utilization, the number of final participants were of the order of I think 500, 700, something like that. For databases, the number 1000 was crossed for the first time. I think it was 1030 or 1040. It was then realized that one should not, of course, a significant number of students are in the electronics, CS, IT fields, but the remaining half are in traditional fields like mechanical, electrical, civil and maybe some in chemical engineering. And of course, sprinkling of uh, odd branches like production, construction, instrumentation and something like that. So, Professor Star Fatak started uh, to rope in people from some other departments and uh, the first guinea pig turned out to be the department of mechanical engineering and I volunteered to do a course in thermodynamics. And I think many some of the faces are familiar, so 
and maybe those who are not familiar know must have known what has happened because at least I see out of this 30 centers some 24 or 25 were centers in thermodynamics, right. Uh, how many um, centers here uh, which were not centers of thermodynamics? Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay. And how many centers here, uh, here which were not centers at all earlier in this? Just 4, okay, not so. So, we seem to have some set of reasonably established centers. That is good because in thermodynamics we could uh, handle something like uh, 850 uh, participants. In electronics the number was something like 1250. 1300 roughly. Then uh, we are halfway through implementing photovoltaics, right? That is the coordinators workshop is over. And now this is the coordinators workshop for heat transfer. So, mechanical engineering is uh, had signed up for thermodynamics, it is completed. The second part of mech engineering, uh, for some reason, again, the so called thermal and fluids engineering part is uh, heat transfer beginning now. And uh, two other colleagues, Professor uh, Puranik and Professor uh, Sharma, right? Atul Sharma, I do not know whether they are here. Huh, they are, at least Professor Atul Sharma is here. They have already signed up for a similar course on computational fluid dynamics and heat transfer. Okay. So, this was essentially the uh, background and I hope uh, you will enjoy this coordinators workshop and I hope uh, you will be able to manage. I want all of you to promise that you will get at least 50 participants at each center. So, let us see whether we can uh, overtake the electronic stuff. Uh, now, may I request uh, Professor Sukhatme, the chief guest and since we are all the heat transfer people, I do not think I have to introduce Professor Sukhatme. Sir. Professor Vedula, head of the department. Gaitonde, Professor Sridharan, Professor Prabhu, the coordinators of the workshop, project managers, all participants who are coming here as coordinators, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> About uh, three months ago, I inaugurated the two week workshop on thermodynamics, which was being conducted at remote centers. And uh, today, it is my pleasure to inaugurate this five day coordinators workshop for the subject of heat transfer. They are two related subjects and it is very logical that having conducted the course in thermodynamics, we should now go on to heat transfer and it is further it will be logical if we go on to do a course on CFD which is to follow. So, that you know we will have completed a bunch of courses which sort of relate to each other in mechanical engineering. Uh, Professor Gaitonde has already explained the nature of the course and it is important as coordinators that you appreciate the philosophy behind having these workshops, uh, the 5 day followed by the 10 day. Uh, I think he mentioned to you that earlier we and even today for that matter, short term workshops are there all the time going on in colleges, institutes, typically 20 to 30 participants, typically one professor and uh, they are usually held in the summer or in the winter. This has been going on and will go on. But the main problem with such workshops is you reach to a much smaller audience. You reach out only to 20, 30, 40 people at the most. And uh, therefore, you do not make that kind of impact that you would like. Secondly, one of the features of these workshops is that now you are specifically trying to enhance teaching skills of teachers. Normally, when we used to hold IST workshops in the old days, we would teach the subject like we teach it to MTech students and hope that those who attend will absorb and then automatically teach better. These workshops, however, which you are attending and this 5 plus 10 day uh, plan is to enhance teaching skills. You know, engineering is one field where the qualification for being a professor is that you should have a PhD or you should have an MTech first class and things like that. Nobody asks whether the person can communicate well or whether the person can teach well. You know that in itself is an art. 
it, it is that way and there is no point in my saying why it is so, it is so. I suppose by the time you get a PhD you are so tired of studying that if you ask one more degree you would not get anybody as it is we are not getting enough people to teach. So, that could be one reason, but the fact is most of us pick up our teaching skills on the job as we go along. During our M tech we might have been teaching assistants and so on, so we pick up a few skills, but really the skill begins when you face the first class in your college as a young lecturer and you have 60 students in front of you and they are out to trouble you let me tell you when you are young and you have to take it in your stride and once you do then you do something with your life. So, the particular workshop which you are attending this 5 day followed by the 10 day later is not only to bring out concepts and ideas in the subject of heat transfer, but also to specifically improve and empower the teacher with more teaching skills and in that sense it is different. It is also different because as Professor Gaitonde mentioned we are now reaching out to a much larger number and this is the magic of distance learning. Uh, it is a combination of classroom teaching and distance learning that we are adopting in this model. Uh, classroom teaching you reach out to too small a number, distance learning you can reach out to any number, but then it is the distance and that distance means you are just having something that is being heard. Now, we have got interactive mode and we also have coordinators like you who will go from here, go back there and be present to conduct tutorials, solve problems and so on. So, not only are we reaching out to a larger number, but I think we are reaching out more effectively to a larger number. And again as Professor Gaitonde mentioned, the number is now significant enough. For instance, I estimated that say this year across the country, there will be about uh, 4000 uh, places, uh, 4000 teachers required for teaching heat transfer this year. Now, in this course we will be reaching out to nearly 1000, maybe more, maybe less, but of that order, which means you are really straight away reaching out to about 20 or maybe slightly higher percentage of that total population that we are talking about. You understand? So, it is a significant number of teachers who are going to be teaching heat transfer to whom one is reaching out and that is also very, very important because the dimension of the problem is huge now. It has just skyrocketed. You may uh, sometimes uh, just to give you some numbers. I joined the Banaras Engineering College as a first year student in 1954. Okay. The total student engineering capacity for colleges undergraduate uh, capacity at that time was around 10,000, less than 10,000 for the whole country. Today, the sanctioned capacity in the country exceeds 1 million, all right, it is more than 10 lakhs being filled entirely, but it is still it is in lakhs now. We are talking of something close to 10 lakhs as the total number of students who are probably getting into engineering colleges. So, you can see the, the volume of expansion that has taken place. It is not volume corresponding to population growth or population has grown only three, three times in the last 60 years, but this has grown and that is because the country has industrialized more rapidly. So, it is inevitable. Whether it should have grown so rapidly, not grown so rapidly, these are points which will always be debated and so on. But the fact is, this is the reality, quantity is there, quality has suffered and we need to increase quality and therefore, such workshops as many as can be held need to be encouraged and need to be attended. Now, the success of the workshop in terms of delivery depends on of course, the two persons who will be conducting this workshop and that is Professor uh, Prabhu and Professor Sridharan, they will be conducting the workshop. I can assure you they are young, they are enthusiastic and they will make you work hard, they will also work hard, no question about it. Okay. At the end of the day, if any of you has any energy left, join a walking contest with Professor Prabhu. Let me tell you is the fastest walker on the campus. Anytime we meet, as soon as we exchange a few words, I tell Prabhu, you know, you go ahead, I cannot keep pace with you. So, at the end of the day, if you have some energy left, take him on for a walking race. He will 
probably, I think, unless you are really a fast walker, you will probably still be way ahead of you. So, he has energy. Use that energy to learn more heat transfer. And in turn, let me tell you, when you go back and two months or three months later, when we hold the 10 day workshop in uh, remote centers, and each one of you will be at one remote center, we expect you also to handle your job very responsibly. Then the success of the course is assured. So, coordinators have a very important role and we urge you to take this job seriously. Not only will you benefit, I mean professionally, because you will teach the course a whole lot better, but you will have the pleasure of also having helped another 30, 40 people in your remote center to also pick up the course. And there is no pleasure like having brought up people who themselves come back to you with a feedback saying, because you were here, I now do a better job what I am supposed to do. So, do take your job seriously. Uh, there will be things like attendance and all, but you know attendance and all are what I call disciplinary measures which beyond the point that do not have that same impact as feeling that you should do your job well. Once you have that feeling, it gets done and that is I want you all to have that feeling. Now, let me talk a little bit about the subject of heat transfer. Uh, the the subject of heat transfer is a, in my view, and you can say it is a biased view, it is a what I call a fascinating subject. It is a fascinating subject because it has many widespread applications. That is what makes it, in my view, a very fascinating subject. It is a fascinating subject because it requires a knowledge of physics, it requires a knowledge of mathematics. And it also requires an engineer's skill to be able to solve day to day problems. That is what makes it fascinating. It is not just mathematics, it is not just physics. It is applying the principles of physics and science to problems of interest and then developing devices which work in real life. And or if devices have been built, in analyzing those devices. This is what heat transfer is all about. And it is fascinating because it keeps growing, the areas of application keep growing. Just to give you an example, for instance, when we used to study radiation, the first time I studied radiation as a subject, incidentally, there was no undergraduate course in heat transfer for me. I never did an undergraduate subject as heat transfer. It was not there in the curriculum in the 50s in India. All right. So, I studied heat transfer straight away as a postgraduate student taking subjects like conduction, heat transfer, convection, etcetera. And then when I came back to teach, I had to teach an undergraduate course, which I myself had never undergone. So, you see, things have changed. But just to, to come back again to what I was saying, the subject is fascinating because the areas in which we are interested keep changing. Earlier, when we used to talk of radiation in the old days, the problems we gave, generally you would have a problem involving furnaces you have some furnace walls and you will say, uh, they are exchanging heat by radiation, calculate the heat exchange or if there is one surface which is a re-radiating surface, what will be its temperature and things like that. Typical problems of furnaces were what we did. Suddenly, in the late 50s, space, the first uh, spacecraft went up, the first Sputnik went up in 56 when I was an undergraduate student. Okay? And, uh, Immediately, problems of space are all problems in which radiation plays a critical role in trying to either cool equipment on board or in trying to see that equipment on board does not overheat and things like that. So, radiation applied to space problems became a big thing in the late 50s and continues to be a big area of interest. Uh, in the old days, when we studied conduction, for instance, I mean, classically people say conduction for what? Conduction means first thing is give a problem on insulation around a pipe, old standard problem in heat transfer, you know, asbestos insulation, fiberglass insulation. If you have a pipe or if it is a refrigeration uh, or an air conditioning problem, an insulation for lower temperatures. But what would be the thickness of that insulation? Typical old fashioned problem in conduction to, to be done. That has changed now. Today, for instance, uh, I mean, to, not today, but you know, a few years ago, as electronics became more and more miniaturized, problems of conduction and convection in miniature systems, electronic systems, in chips became the things which we started worrying about. And therefore, heat transfer problems associated 
with electronics became a major subject of interest and so many problems can be thought of or uh, can be done in these areas. Convection, take an example like that. All of you know, if you know the Dieter's Bolter equation, turbulent flow through a pipe, our standard question always when we meet somebody says, if there is flow in a pipe, when does it become turbulent? He says, Reynolds number is greater than 2000. So, good, he at least knows that much. Then you say, if you have studied heat transfer, what equation will he use? He will say, the normal equation is Nusselt number 0 0.023, Reynolds number to the 0 0.8, etcetera. He says, okay, he knows that much. But today now, we are no longer using big pipes. We are using micro scale, micro heat transfer, small diameter pipes. And in small diameter pipes, different dimensionless numbers take over. Two phase flow in this occurs, and two phase flow, uh, the uh, flow patterns as well as the correlations have changed. So, heat transfer at a micro scale has become a very important problem, have become very important application on which problems have to be solved. The same principles still hold it is radiation, convection, and conduction, but the nature of the application has changed, and that is what makes heat transfer a fascinating subject. More importantly, lately, there are so many problems involving the life sciences, which require a good knowledge of heat transfer. Let me give you one example. If you read the newspapers nowadays, there is a lot of talk about people using cell phones. And is cell phone radiation harmful? Is it typical? If you read any newspaper, and depending upon whether which side you are on, you will say, if you are a manufacturer, you will say, ha, it is absolutely nothing. The amount of radiation is negligible, stop worrying about it. If you are a user and you feel strongly about it, you will go on saying, because radiation was high in that building, so many children got uh, cancer or so many people get headaches and things like that. And these are the typical newspaper articles come. Why is one worried about the effects of, I mean, what is the mechanism first of all, you ask yourself behind this. Two things are talked about. One is they say, if you hold the cell phone close to your ear, then it microwaves after all that are being transmitted and those microwaves could be causing heating just like in a microwave oven. A microwave oven has by the way few hundreds of watts. This year we are talking about milliwatts or you know something of that order. That too you know just for a certain amount of time. Will that cause harm? Will it cause overheating? There are a whole lot of people who will say yes, that is what is causing the damage. The heating that occurs because you hold a cell phone near for a long period of time and therefore, you should not make a call for more than few minutes or something like that. There are others who say, look, uh, I mean, if you are a heat transfer engineer, they say, well, the heating can never be important. You are talking of milliwatts of power, you are talking of large areas. At the most, those temperatures temporarily may go out by a fraction of a degree. It is not worth talking about. But it remains still a problem of contention. By the way, there are people who do not know heat transfer, who do not understand that when something heats up, it has to lose heat also. So, what they do is they say if you hold the cell phone for half an hour here and it is say 0.1 watt or 0.2 watts, then 0 0.2 into 30 minutes is the amount of energy that has gone in. Take some mass here and multiply it by specific heat and so the rise of temperature is 5 degrees, 10 degrees, things like that. I have seen people say that, which is absolute nonsense. because the moment something heats up, it has to start losing heat. You have to reach some steady state value. But many people do not appreciate that argument. Even on discussed faculty, if you read it, you will see there are people going around who are not fortunately belonging to mechanical engineering who are talking such things. Okay, so, the point is heat transfer as a subject has widespread ramifications. And so, as a teacher, it is not only important to understand the principles of the subject, which of course remain the same or do not change all that much, but to also understand the applications and go out into applications that interest you. Then the subject automatically you retain interest in it. If you teach the same thing, if you solve the same problems year in and year out, well, then automatically say what is there, you know, students come, I teach them, my notes are ready, I will go and teach that. That is not enough. You have to keep adding on material in the form of new problems deleting older problems and so on. And then, you are yourself mentally active, students also enjoy it. We used to have a teacher in Banaras, I remember still. You know who used to enter our class and uh, it, the general uh, story was that the notes he used to bring 
but the notes which he took down when he was a student. That was the general story. I am probably correct. So, he was he used to follow his notes very rigorously. So, good teacher by the way, but you know notes he used to follow regularly. And if for instance, you know there was a repeater in the class, you know in Banaras in those days, if you failed more than two subjects, you had to repeat the whole year. So, sometimes you know there would be somebody, few students would be repeating the whole year. And then if there is a repeater next to you, he would say, no, now Charu Abu is going to tell us a joke. And say, how do you know? He well, it is in my notes there already. You know, that kind of thing. Everything has, you know, for him written down. So, at least do not write down, you know, jokes in your notes. They should be something that must come from your heart. So, there is scope all the time for doing something new. People should never think a subject means I have got my notes and I just walk in and deliver them. There is always something new to be added. That is what makes the teaching of engineering so fascinating because there are so many applications. Keep reading about those applications, get problems from them. You will be interested, your students also will be interested. So, uh, let me now I think uh, conclude with what I wanted to say. I think what I have said is basically two or three things. First of all, I have talked a little about the nature of this workshop, the five day workshop. The five day workshop is to be followed by the 10 day workshop at remote center. And through this mechanism, we believe we will be enhancing the teaching skills of a much larger number of teachers all across the country. Uh, I also talked about the responsibilities <coughs> of coordinators. We want them to work hard. We want them to learn the subject. We want them not only to improve their skills, but to improve the skills of others at remote centers. So, we, we, we do feel that you know they have a very heavy responsibility if we are to carry out our mandate properly. And finally, I talked a little bit about heat transfer just to keep you entertained you know I mean the subject is good. I have loved teaching it as I told you the first time I taught it was in 1966 okay. That was the first time I taught the subject and I have taught it for nearly 30 years or 35 years after that quite regularly off and on for undergraduate courses. It was never for me a boring subject to teach, never, not once did I walk into an undergraduate class and say, oh, not the same thing again. It never happened. Why? Simply because you are all the time reading something, you are adding something, you are subtracting something. And above all, you are always facing new students. You may be the same, but the students are changing. And mind you, let me tell you, you may think you know the subject, but every year you will always find there will be a bright student or two in the class who will come up with a question and you will need to think about the answer to that question. So, do not ever overestimate that there is nothing left to ask. I know all the questions they are going to ask, I know all the answers. It never happens. There is always somebody who will come up with a question and you need to think about the answer and that is what makes a subject like this as I said so fascinating, so interesting and something which absorbs you and keeps you going in life and uh, uh, feeling younger all the time. I would love to teach heat transfer again to be quite honest. The trouble is as you grow older, you do not quite have that uh, shall I say energy to teach or you do not quite have the feel for numbers that you had earlier. You cannot move with that alacrity as you used to when you were younger. That is the only thing. But teaching it has been a joy. So, I want you to enjoy the subject. I want you to enjoy your teaching and at the same time work hard at it. Then only everything becomes meaningful. The teaching profession itself then starts attaining a different meaning. So, with these words, let me say I have uh, once again great pleasure in being here this morning. I have great pleasure in inaugurating this five day workshop. I wish it all success and I hope that you will go back enriched and also of course, that the 10 day workshop to follow will be a great success. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much Professor Sukhatme. Now, may I request Professor uh, R. P. Vedula, HOD of Mechanical Engineering and uh, a teacher of heat transfer in his own right to say something. Okay, um, this comes as a total surprise to me. I was just supposed to come here, sit and do nothing. And he says teacher of heat transfer in his own right. I do not know what he means because um, I am not sure if he ever sat in my class when I was first, uh, you did see. <laughs> um, incidentally, I did sit in Professor Sukhatme's class long time ago when he was teaching. And like he said, 
we would all wish for him to have delivered a few lectures at least, but at least um, with uh, um, his um, um, knowledge, we would have um, benefited quite a bit. But then, um, um, uh, at least he has come here and he has said something to you, all very relevant things. Um, we really thank him for having taken the time to come here and address all of us. Okay. Um, of course, Professor Prabhu and uh, Professor Sridharan, um, they have been teaching heat transfer in our department. And um, like both Professor Sukhatme and Gayatunde have said, both are very good teachers. And um, I hope you all will enjoy your next few days of stay here. And of course, um, <clears throat> hopefully when you go back to your um, local centers, you are going to be um, um, giving out as much energy as these two people have um, been giving to you. Thank you very much. So, so may I introduce uh, Professor S. V. Prabhu and uh, Professor Arun Sridharan. Uh, before I hand it over to Professor Prabhu for uh, uh, the formal beginning of the course, uh, some introduction. Professor Prabhu is an alumnus of uh, this institute. He has a PhD and uh, Professor Vedula was his supervisor. So, before that, uh, he did his BE from Mysore University. Uh, and uh, M Tech from uh, Suratkal, RAC Suratkal, and now VNI, uh, now NIT Suratkal. Okay, and uh, he has worked in Palghat with the Flow Control uh, Institute, and he is a superb experimentalist. And he will see to it that you do your demonstration and uh, learning experiments here. And he will also see to it that you have a good heat transfer lab for the final main workshop at your respective places. If you do not, if you have a shortage or if you are not sure, collect all the relevant data from you. Within three months, you should be able to set up, if you are interested, a reasonably good heat transfer lab. Uh, Professor Arun Sridharan, uh, do not go by his name. He has uh, grown in Mumbai and those who are Marathi can speak to him in Marathi and he will properly talk Marathi to you, the, the other Hindu colony Marathi type. Okay. Uh, well, he is not an alumnus of IIT Bombay, but that does not make him any less important for us. Okay. Now, may I just request Professor Prabhu and maybe Professor Arun to take over. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I do not want to waste time of all the professors who have come on Monday morning here. So, we will be getting started with after the tea session at 10.30 and what we have planned is maybe we will spend today conduction and next two days that is Tuesday, Wednesday on convection and radiation will be on Thursday. Uh, a little bit of radiation on Thursday, uh, Friday morning followed by heat exchangers on Friday in the morning session. And Friday evening is sort of wash out technically in the sense that we will be focusing on how to coordinate and other, other things like that. I think I do not want to waste any of our, anyone else's time just to say that I sincerely thank Professor Vedula and Professor Sukatme and of course Professor Gaitonde who has, in fact without Professor Gaitonde's enthusiasm, myself and Professor Arun would not have jumped into this. The moment we got the mail from Professor Gaitunde, I saw the mail somewhere in midnight and I immediately talked to Arun and the next day we had met perhaps uh, Dr. Mukta. So, it is all his enthusiasm and he is always behind us to help us out. In fact, in the main workshop, I am even requesting Professor Gaitunde to take a couple of lectures. As I, I had already requested Professor Sukatme and as you have heard from him, uh, he does not want to get involved at the teaching level at this stage, but Professor Gaitunde will be there with us at every stage to help us out in finer details. With this, I will uh, stop interacting with you now and we will get started at 10.30. Thank you.
good morning everybody uh, thank you for being here uh, we sincerely like to thank uh, the dignitaries on the dais and our colleagues who have come here uh, we hope that the interaction during this coordinators workshop is very fruitful to all of you uh, let us make this as interactive as possible let it not be a one way street uh, the schedule is drawn for five days doesn't mean that we have to follow it in letter and spirit uh, we are always open for discussion uh, during the session as well as during the lunch slash dinner uh, which is going to be there. Uh, one of us will be there at either the lunch or the dinner session for any kind of interaction and at other times also if you uh, feel free to stop us for anything related to the course. Okay, So let it be a two way street and let it not be a monologue because uh, teaching is one thing which cannot uh, survive if it is a one-way street. So please keep all channels of communication open. Thank you. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Professor Sukhatme from on the behalf of the Eklavya team and Professor Fatak who couldn't be here today. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. It was a great pleasure listening to you as usual. Professor Gaitundi, thank you very much for making the time and Professor Vedula, thank you so much for coming here. I re request you to join us for tea outside. Thank you so much.